Well, it's another episode of What's Next, and it's a great pleasure to welcome Sean Sanders, who's the CEO of a company that you might not have heard of. He's also the co-founder of a company called Revix. Is it Revix or Revix? How do I pronounce it, Sean? It depends, I guess, if you're US-based or UK-based or South African, uh, it's Revix. So, so either way, I've said it correctly, but Revix is a very interesting uh, company and really relevant in today's world. Firstly, tell us a little bit about Sean and a little bit about Revix and what your company does. Sure. So thanks for having me, Aki. Uh, so I studied a Bachelor of Business Science at UCT. I then went to work for a specialty investment group in Johannesburg, uh, finished my CFA. I then worked for a family office in the UK. So a family office is just really when somebody has a lot of money and they need to hire different people to do different things. I then worked for a venture capital firm in Cape Town. And while I was working for the venture capital firm, I sort of realized that I was on the wrong side of the table. I wanted to sort of go out and start my own thing. And that was late 2016 entering early 2017 so just before the big crypto boom had started and i was quite interested in actually starting a crypto fund back then and this is again sort of the early days uh, well, i guess relative to today it's the early days and the yeah. idea of sort of having a product a financial product that is that allowed people to diversify in the crypto space very much like they would in the traditional stock market or in the bond market uh, made a lot of sense to me because for some reason people when they invest in the cryptocurrency space choose to invest in say only bitcoin or maybe take a gamble on individual other cryptocurrencies so our wow. products at revix have been centered around bundles and what bundles really are uh, are diversified crypto investment products and they're not funds which is quite interesting so if you go invest yes. in say satrix top 40 etf right you're investing right. in a fund that fund has analysts they have fund managers there's a lot of costs in between all of that now with revix when you buy into say our top 10 bundle which gives you exposure to the top 10 cryptocurrencies by mark uh, by they're all equally weighted uh, you actually yes. buy the underlying cryptocurrencies and there's no ah. fund structure in place at all so you're sort of disintermediating the fund manager in this process which means that we can offer lower fees and I guess as well, you 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 you're uh, spreading out your risk, right? Because uh, by diversifying the way you're spoken, speaking about, you're actually um, you know you're spreading out your risk, which is uh, really an interesting way of looking at it. But I mean, when you look at Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, you know you'll have your your uh, your traditional uh, finance people, you know, saying you know pulling their face when they look at the stuff, and you look at the all-time high that where Bitcoin is and, the, and these cryptocurrencies, it's it's quite astonishing. I mean, is it going to go higher? Is there still an upside to uh, cryptocurrency and, and Bitcoin? Well, you know, you had Tesla enter the crypto space for the first time uh, towards the beginning yes. of this week. I mean, that was the biggest news, in my opinion, uh, since, you know, the start of crypto, really, because you've had... So, really, yeah. Just with that Tesla thing that you mentioned, so uh, from what I understand, you can buy a, a Tesla uh, with, uh, with your Bitcoin. Is that, you can. Is, that, is that right? You can. If I'm not mistaken, and I stand to be corrected on this, uh, a current Tesla Model S is five Bitcoin. So that's how much you would pay for that Model S. Uh, wow. I, I suppose the question now is really, is that Model S going to be more expensive or less expensive in Bitcoin terms over the coming years? And you know what? You've had Tesla into the space. PayPal is offering cryptocurrency related services. BlackRock, the biggest asset manager in the world, has entered the space. Fidelity. Fidelity is an unknown uh, investment kind of play in South Africa, but they've got $3.1 trillion assets under management. JP Morgan's in the space. I mean, MicroStrategy, they were sort of the, 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 the leader by acquiring $1.15 billion worth of Bitcoin, which is now worth $3.3 billion. And I mean, Tesla mm -hmm. acquired $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin to put on their balance sheet. So what they've really said is that instead of holding US dollars, they would prefer to own Bitcoin. And this is huge news. I mean, a lot of people don't know this as well, but you've had a lot of endowment funds. So Harvard's, Browns and Yale's endowment funds into the crypto space. So there's a lot of corporate activity going on. And, you know, it's sort of a domino effect. When one big corporate yeah. enters the space, all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier for others to follow suit. And that's what I think is happening now. So can this market go a lot higher? Of course. I mean, there's risk in crypto, right? So let's be very upfront about this. I mean, this market yes. can go up, it can go down. Let's, you know, not kid ourselves that this market could pull, pull, pull back 10 or 20%. Yes. But the opportunity here is sort of a once in a generation one where you could see this emergence of an asset class go from being worth uh, 1.3 odd trillion dollars today to all of a sudden worth five or 10 trillion. And that's really the big investment opportunity. Wow.
it's uh, very, very interestingly put. So um, from what I'm hearing from you, there's definitely an up still to go. And, and I guess the, 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 the variance in the ups and downs uh, seems to be more stable than it was a few years ago, you know, and uh, it seems to have stabilized across a certain band. Um, sure, you know, we recently had a big drop, but I think uh, it, it's it's a lot more stable than what it was, uh, you know, say five years ago. So where, where do you see it in five years' time? Do you see it being even more stable? Um, where, where do you see crypto in five years? And I know it's difficult to predict so far out because five years is a long time. But where do you see it? So you've seen banks. I mean, in Germany and in the U.S., in many states of the U.S., banks can actually custody cryptocurrency now for their customers. So this is sort of the starting point. And if you look back at the internet and sort of how the, the dot-com companies emerged in the 90s and into the early 2000s, you know, mm. sort of the technology was clunky. The internet was clunky and it emerged into something that was really user-friendly and ultimately not so kind of uh, crypt, uh, not so uh, cryptic in a sense, right? And that's, yeah. there's a pun yeah. of words there, obviously. But I think there's a big opportunity if you're looking at uh, more traditional finance entering the space and then just sort of the more more traditional retail investor so just the everyday person all of a sudden going okay well maybe i'm going to choose to use bitcoin or one of the other you know there's four thousand cryptocurrencies but one of the other cryptocurrencies for payment and i don't think a lot of people realize this as well but what's going on with the likes of ethereum um, and eos and Cardano? i mean these are smart contract oriented cryptocurrencies and what they do is they essentially i mean a bitcoin does this to a certain degree as well but they sort of make money smart so if you can imagine in the future, and I mean, central bank digital currencies are looking to do this as well. But if you can make money smart, all of a sudden you can say, all right, so I'm giving out a social grant like we do in South Africa. You can only spend this money on certain actions or certain activities. You can't go and, you know, spend this money on, I don't know, buying alcohol or, you know, buying, you know, withdrawing it at an ah. ATM. You can only spend it at certain stores. Think about the tender process in South Africa as well, right? Imagine being able to give money to a company with a very specific use. And I think that's the idea of having sort of smart digital money that a lot of people don't really realize just yet because we're only used to using cash. Yeah. I think that's the big opportunity yeah. with crypto. So in five well, years time, you probably yeah. will see the emergence of, I mean, in my opinion, Bitcoin is more like gold than like fiat currency. So you will probably see, uh, you know, a lot of central banks, which is, is, you know, Iran central bank has recently purchased Bitcoin as a, a store of value. So you'll see central banks move into buying Bitcoin in much the same way that a lot of corporates have. So in the same way that Tesla has, the same way that MicroStrategy has. Uh, in terms of the broader crypto sphere, it's just going to become more user friendly. All of a sudden yeah. using crypto won't be so weird. I mean, when you check out um, at the likes of Takealot as an example or any other online retailer, you'll just have the option of crypto as a payment mechanism. Yes. So that's where I sort oh, of see really it cool. this time. Yeah, that's really interesting the way you analyze that even the Sasa thing and uh, it's really you can just see the value in what cryptocurrency brings. Now, coming back to your products and uh, you know uh, you know Revix per se, you know what what kind of products do you guys actually offer? Sure. So we offer Bitcoin as a standalone investment option. We offer Ethereum, which is the second biggest cryptocurrency and is actually uh, been a star performer in the market over the last while. Uh, I think it got two and a half times Bitcoin's returns over the last 12 months. Um, then we offer USDC, which is a dollar backed stable coin, which means that it essentially tracks the value of the dollar. Um, every cryptocurrency USDC token is worth one dollar. So essentially, if you're wanting to rand hedge or move your money out of rands and into dollars, we've got that product. Then we have a very interesting product called Pax G or Pax Gold. Now, Pax Gold is a gold backed token, which means that every single token you own is equivalent to one ounce of a physical gold bar held in London Brinks vaults. So these are fully insured oh, wow. gold bars. And it's, it's quite cool the way that they've done it is that there's 400 ounces in a single gold bar. Now, every gold bar has a serial number on it, and every single gold bar is broken up into 400 tokens. And each of those digital tokens have the same serial number that's linked to that gold bar. So, and this is on the Ethereum network as well, which is also really interesting. So that means that when you uh, buy or sell Pax G, you're able to buy and sell gold with a third party intermediary, or sorry, a third party that without any intermediary, yeah. which is really yeah, interesting. So, so those cool. are the standalone products we have. And then our flagship products, which I mentioned earlier in the podcast, are our bundles. So our crypto bundles allow you to get diversified, low cost exposure to the crypto asset class. So you can sort of yeah. invest in this asset class in a more, I don't know, in my opinion, it's a more smart and responsible way than going out and just gambling and choosing individual names and hoping that, you know, they, they give you a great return. So our top 10 bundles, our flagship product, it provides equally weighted exposure to the top 10 cryptocurrencies. Uh, we've then got a payment bundle, which provides access to the cryptocurrencies that are looking to become digital cash. 
And then we've got a smart contract bundle, which provides exposure to the likes of Ethereum, Cardano, EOS, which are looking to sort of make um, application yeah. or enable applications to run on top of blockchains, which are really interesting. That is quite, um, that's quite comprehensive stuff you got there, Sean. But I mean, can you just delve a little bit be, a little bit deeper into those bundles? I mean, as, a, as an investor, I'm listening to you right now. Uh, how, how do I actually, you know, buy any of these bundles? Uh, how does that work? Sure. So you can sign up to Revix at www.revix.com. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't have any monthly subscription fees with us. It's really straightforward. Uh, once you've signed up, we need to KYC you. So you need to verify your account. In South Africa, that's called FICA. So you would need to submit an ID document. You would need to uh, get a selfie so we can verify your identity to uh, you being the actual person that's signing up for the account. And then we would need a proof of address. Once that's done, you can make a deposit of 500 Rand. I mean, that's our starting amount in any one of our products and you can choose to invest. Now, what's quite interesting okay. about our bundles is that once you've made an investment into any one of them, I mean, you can invest in all three or you can just invest in one. Now, when you've made that investment, the bundles automatically update every single month. And what we call it a rebalance. And what this means is that let's say you're earning the top 10 cryptocurrency bundle and one yeah. of the cryptocurrencies fall out of the top 10. What we will do is replace that cryptocurrency automatically for you with algorithms. So that means that you'll always own the 10 biggest cryptocurrencies in the market. So ah, it's very similar to owning the Satrix top 40, but instead of having quarterly or semi-annually uh, rebalances that take place, you can have a rebalance that takes place every month and you don't need to worry about updating the cryptocurrencies yourself at all. And what about fees, for example? Sure, so we have char we charge a 1% buy and sell fee. There are no deposit fees. And as I mentioned, there's no subscription fees. And then yeah. when you're looking to make a withdrawal, there's a small 50 Rand withdrawal fee. Um, and then with our bundles, and only with our bundles, not with Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDC, or PaxG, the standalone products, you would have a 0.17% monthly rebalancing fee, which works out to a roughly 2% per year fee um, that's charged okay. on the bundle amount that you own. It's pretty fair. I mean, it's kind of standard what many of the financial services are charging, if not even more competitive, the way it sounds. Um, it's interesting to say you talk about FICA and regulation and that sort of thing, and that regulatory landscape is really interesting in, interesting in South Africa. I mean, you mentioned the, the Reserve Bank, you know, uh, you know, buying some Bitcoin as well, et cetera. Um, and, and, and I guess the regulatory environment is going to get a lot tighter in the next few years. I mean, you're even hearing about SARS, you know, saying that, listen, if you've got Bitcoin and you've got cryptocurrency, et cetera, you know, we want a slice of that. So where, where do you see that regulatory structure going with the South African citizens? Yeah, so South Africa's taken an interesting approach. The rest of the world goes in one direction and South Africa seems to be wanting to go in the opposite direction. So in most developed nations, if you're looking at Switzerland, Germany, Liechtenstein, uh, Singapore, they've come out with crypto specific regulations that sort of govern cryptocurrencies based on the way that they operate because you know bitcoin is not the same as ethereum um, which is not the yeah. same as other cryptocurrencies so there's a comprehensive right. crypto regulatory sort of framework that's come into place that south africa hasn't introduced we've been late to the party right. It's definitely led to a lot of flight of capital of people, you know, looking to set up their businesses offshore. I mean, Revix, we've had to, you know, sort of look at the United Kingdom. We've had to look at other jurisdictions such as Switzerland as well, because for us, we can't market our product in South Africa. I don't think a lot of people realize this, but you can't go and market using, say, a paid search on Google. You can't go to Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter and market your product. Um, as a cryptocurrency provider, unless you're regulated, right? Because I mean, these right. platforms obviously want to protect their users. And naturally, there's been a lot of scams in the past in the crypto space. So it's completely fair from that, their standpoint. But from our standpoint, we're saying, well, we want to be regulated, right? We want to be able to you know, offer our customers some sort of protection, give them the reassurance that they need. And naturally, I mean, you've heard of the MTI saga, the Mirror Trading International saga that happened recently. You know, you need yes. the regulators to sort of step up and to you know remove those sort of players from the market so the south african regulatory landscape at the moment you know is sort of you know all just wishes and there's a lot of words but there's not a lot of action it seems so from my perspective i would love to see the regulators in south africa sort of step up not try blanket the cryptocurrency market as a securities market which is what they're trying to do now they're trying to right. say that you know and this is perfect for us given that we are a cryptocurrency investment platform but for other players in the market that are maybe looking to use cryptocurrencies as a payment mechanism, you know, treating cryptocurrencies the same as you would treat stocks or bonds or, you know, other securities doesn't really make sense. So mm -hmm. South Africa, I think, needs to take a more uniform approach with the rest of the world and start looking at maybe some of the developed markets and the way that they're approaching crypto. 
Absolutely fascinating. I mean, uh, I'm blown away by this product, Sean. I mean, wh where are you going to take, wh where are you taking Revix to next? Uh, that is going to be a journey. So it's it's quite an interesting sort of next six months to 12, next six to 12 months ahead for us. So we're looking to branch out of the crypto space to so sort of blur the lines between traditional investing, the investing that you would know in stocks and bonds yes. and the cryptocurrency world and sort of bring those two worlds together. Now, we're going to be offering a variety of themed based investments. So if you're wanting to invest in, say, gene therapy, AI, biotech, renewable energy, esports and video gaming, medical cannabis, so any of these emerging themes or sectors, and you sort of just don't know how to get exposure to those areas, but you're passionate about them. Maybe you even right. ordered something from the likes of Take A Lot and you want to invest in e-commerce, but you don't know how to do that. Or you've ordered food from Uber Eats, but you don't know how to invest in the ride hailing services or in the food delivery apps. You know, we want to be able to provide different serv or different products that allow you to invest in those spaces. So that's what's coming next from a product standpoint and from a platform standpoint. So what Revix will do is that we're going to be offering some smart automated investment tools. So what this means is that we want to connect your fitness device and we want to be able to essentially allow you to create triggers. So if you say, right, I want to walk 8000 steps a day. Uh, or I want to walk right. 10,000 steps a day. When you complete those steps, let's reward you. So let's incentivize you to do that. And then let's reward uh -huh. you. So let's actually say, right, okay, right. If you walk 8,000, 10,000 steps a day, you can put 10, uh, 100 rand or 200 rand into a particular investment, and then we'll reward you for doing so. So in a very discovery-like model, we want to gamify yes. and incentivize smart investing actions. That is so cool. Uh, man, this is, uh, this is so exciting. Um, what do you say finally to the people out there and, and, you know, I, I, over the last uh, few months, I've met people who've lost a lot of money uh, from Bitcoin. In other words, their money's been stolen out of their account, not lost because of the variance in the market that happens. But um, what do you say to those people that have had Bitcoin that has been stolen, for example? You know, there are questions about security and people like to have peace of mind. Um, so, you know, your product is very secure, it sounds. But what, what, what advice do you have for those kind of people? Sure. So I would say do your homework. I mean, make a small investment into a cryptocurrency platform if you're not going to choose Revix. I mean, make the investment and withdraw your funds. Look at the company on LinkedIn. Look at the company on Facebook. Make sure that their employees are real. You know, at the end of the day, every business has real people behind it. You need to find those yes. people. Um, speak to their team, speak to their customer support team, you know, understand the product thoroughly before getting involved. I think people, a lot of people rush into these markets with sort of a FOMO mindset. They're missing out right. and they want to get in really quickly. And then they land up putting a lot of money at risk. And it's not necessarily the cryptocurrency price that changes, but actually the companies, you know, they go under or there's a scam yeah. or something along those lines. Now, we're fortunate we're backed by a listed company called Subvest. Uh, they've been listed since 1988. Uh, so we do have, you know, regular financial audits, security audits, et cetera, et cetera. But what I think is really important when you're looking at sort of the broader crypto landscape, I mean, you will, in, maybe you sign up for a Revix account, maybe you sign up for a competitor's account, you can try out the space, right? I think at the end of the day, you've got to have companies that are reputable, that are providing the best service. And that's the way I believe that business should be done. So we sort of long-term greedy. I truly believe that we offer the best service in the market. Um, our customer support is literally second to none. So yeah, I think just do your homework. That's probably the best advice I can give. That's awesome advice, uh, Sean Saunders, CEO and co-founder of Revix. Thank you so much for your time, Sean. I mean, uh, absolutely fascinating discussion. Wish you well. I'm going to keep a very close eye. I might even become an investor because I like what you've been saying. So thank you for your time, Sean. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. Cheers.